Yeah. Hi, um, bringing this September, uh, August 14th, 2023 school board work session meeting to order. Um, Ms. Hastings, can you take the roll? Sure. Mr. Cotton? Here. Mr. Croto? Here. Ms. Higgins? Here. Mr. Weinberg? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Ms. Meeker? Here. I am here. And Ms. Walsh? Here. And um, absent tonight is Mr. Richards. So we have a quorum. Um, this is primarily a work session to discuss the middle school project. We do have, before we start that, a uh, discussion on whether anyone would like to bring forward for the board's consideration rule resolutions for the New Hampshire School Boards Association. Anyone? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to item two on the agenda, which is the location of the middle school. This is a work session for the board. Um, we plan on having at least two public hearings in September. Um, for members of the public who are watching, we hope this will provide some good information, but also on the district's website, sau8.org, there is a section of um, that is called the Middle School Project that has all of the documents um, to date on the project. Uh, and I will turn it over to the superintendent. Well, thank you. Um, appreciate the opportunity tonight. And really, it's, an op it's a chance for you to hear um, the information that we have accrued to this date relative to the sites. The site over on South Street, which currently is the Runlet Middle School, as well as information relative to uh, the broken ground. So I really uh, think that I'm going to turn it over to Tina and to Holly. Uh, they have a PowerPoint uh, for you. And then I, I really want to have a discussion because ask questions. Um, also think about this PowerPoint as it relates to the hearings that we're going to have, the public hearings scheduled for the end of September 25th and 26th. And so this would be the kind of information that we also want to share with, uh, with, uh, with our public, with our stakeholders. And so if you think that there's pieces of information we need to include, that's really important for us to hear that tonight. So uh, thanks for all oh, everybody being here. I think this is, um, kind of work is really helpful for us. And so I'm going to turn it over to Tina and to Holly to uh, lead us in this review of the PowerPoint. Great. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, so we want to give you an update on what is happening right now. Um, there is a lot of work going on. Uh, we have been uh, contacting folks about the wetlands um, on the broken ground site. And um, we just found out today that it looks like there isn't any wetlands on that site at all. Did my mic just cut? It's still working. It's still working. Yeah, you're okay. good. <laughs> um, so that's good news. Um, we've also submitted to Fish and Game um, to talk about endangered plants or animals on the site. And so that is going to be a little bit of a longer process. They got back to us today with an email that kind of has five questions on it, so we're going to need to sort through that. Um, it looks like there might be some endangered plant species on the site, but I think there's a process for working through that with them, so we'll be able to bring you back more information on that process. Um, we're also actively looking at the water and sewer capacity uh, for that site. So that information is forthcoming as well. Um, it may be that um, it's difficult to get water pressure to that site, so we need to investigate that and make sure that there won't be any issues with that. Um, and we're also, last but not least, uh, getting a traffic engineer on board, and that's going to be someone who's going to look at both sites. Um, so the runlet site and also the broken ground site. So we're in the process of getting them going. So what we hope to do with this presentation is to think about what goals you all have for the new site for the middle school. Um, we've been working with you for a while, and so we've, we've heard some of your goals, and we started taking a stab at the list that you see up in front of you now, which is also what we handed out to you. But um, we would love your in, input on that, and um, I'm sure you want to add to this. But if we come up with a comprehensive list of goals for the site, it'll be a way to help you figure out which site fits your needs um, better. Uh, so think about these things as we're talking about the options for the two sites. So if you go to the next slide. And please stop us if you have any questions um, about what we're saying. 
Um, so right now you can see these two areas are the um, South Street site, the existing Runlet School site, and the Broken Ground site. Um, you can tell that they are, it's hard to read on here, the blue radius is the one mile radius, and the orange radius is one and a half miles. Um, and this is starting to talk about, you know, busing and walking to the site, but this is not really completely accurate diagram because as we were talking to uh, Jack earlier, it's not really as the crow flies, it's as you drive. So we have been in conversations with um, the transportation folks. Um, Terry Crotty has been talking to us about busing and um, she thinks from her analysis that if you move folks to the, um, south, the broken ground site, it would add approximately two buses to what you have right now. And she sent us sort of a long email about her information on that, so I'm happy to forward that to you all so you have that information. So That's if we stay with our current policy on busing. We could, correct. as a board, decide that we wanted to bus additional students from certain locations correct. based on traffic patterns. Yes, that's a good point, Pam. Thank you. So if you go to the next slide. Um, and this just zooms in a little bit more so you can see the size of the Runlet Middle School site versus the size of the Broken Ground site in the two locations. Um, and again, it, it's a little bit deceiving again because I feel like it looks very populated down by Runlet, but if there's only two buses being added, it, it, it's a little bit more of a, an even distribution of students potentially across the two areas. So we go to the next slide, please. And then we've also you know, dived in and done some um, investigation on both sites. So Holly's going to talk a little bit about what we've found in our evaluation. So we've evaluated both sites. Um, so the, the existing Runlet Middle School site, as you know, it's about a 30 acre parcel that includes both the Abbott Downing School and the existing uh, Runlet Middle School. The uh, middle school sits on the northern sort of 22 acre parcel. Um, and then there's a road that sort of bisects the site through the center. Um, we've got some wetlands on the east side of the site here, and then uh, the rest of the site is, is bordered by a kind of a residential neighborhood. Um, and the Abbott Downing School has some frontage on South Street. So um, we're also looking at the traffic patterns on the existing site and that's where when we get the um, traffic engineer kind of on board they can provide some more sort of detailed analysis of this site let's see okay. go to the next slide so we're going to show you three options tonight um, for the broken ground site and two options for the runlet site we're going to start with the runlet site and just so you know what we're going to show you tonight it's really they're just you know ideas and but we're showing you um, a similar size building footprint on both sites, uh, a similar amount of parking, and also the same number of, of athletic fields. So we're trying to compare apples to apples on both sites. Uh, so the first option um, for the South Street site locates the building kind of on the northwest corner of the site, which you don't have a lot of options for the building location on this site because um, the existing school sits in the center of the site uh, it's a, there's really not enough room on the east side of the site to locate a building unless you want to go really vertical with the building. You could, you know, maybe consider a four-story school on the east side of the site, but the uh, west side of the site has more real estate available Can for a new school. Can streets, what street it's bordering on? So, so this is, sorry, where the arrow is, is Spring Street. Springfield. This is Springfield, sorry. Conant Drive along here. South Street here and Cypress back here. Mm -hmm. That helps. It does. Thank you. And you can see the existing building outline in red on top of the fields right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what's the space between a new building and the existing building? Um, that's about 45 feet. So it's pretty close. And to the edge of the, pro to the, property line with the neighbors? 25 feet to the property line on the west side of the site. It's now we could scooch it over a little bit so it's a little more it's easy there, but it's, it's pretty tight. And if you look, it's 60 feet, right, from the South Street to the front of 
the Abbott Downing School, just to give you in your mind an idea of what that feels like in terms of space. I think Jack and the superintendent may have drawn a line outside. <laughs> you didn't get to it. I will go. I will go and walk that line. I know it was there and it was washed away, but I will go back while you use it. <laughs> just the next, hit the Iowa. The next time you drive by Abbott Downing, in in your mind, think about that sixty feet. Mm. So, is it is it demonstrated what the is it or maybe that's the outdoor classrooms for what construction time would look like the mobile. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. There's, um, you know, there's going to need to be lay down space during construction, right? So you can imagine that's either going to happen behind the new building on that field that we're showing, like the soccer field, it. or it could potentially happen in the front where we're showing new parking, but it's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And would the entire existing be building be able to remain during construction or would we have to remove any part of it? Right now we're showing it remaining for construction because that's the least expensive way to attack it so you don't have to have uh, modulars you know, on the site. So we are replicating the, um, the number of fields that are on the current middle school site, although some of the fields are going to have to overlap, so they wouldn't be able to be used simultaneously. So we're showing two soccer fields, uh, lacrosse field, the practice football field, baseball, and softball. And that's what you currently have on the middle school site. Um, but you know, four of those fields in this configuration actually have to overlap one another. A little tight we, we have about 200 parking spaces so you are gaining some parking spaces we know that parking is an issue on the runlet site we've heard that um, you know uh, teachers some of the teachers who travel between schools have a really hard time parking when they come back to the middle school um, just a quick question yeah. um, <clears throat> time for construction comparatively between the two sites um, I, th I think what we're trying to show is that you could do it in a single phase of construction for okay. both. Um, what will be more challenging here, thank you, sorry. Um, we've been talking about potentially geothermal for this building. So what they would want to do is install that underneath a field. So on this site, you'd probably put it underneath that soccer field that's behind the building. Um, so it's really kind of tight and you'll see with you know broken ground you have a lot more options for that right. you know you could potentially start that you know way ahead of time and you could have a bigger well field at broken ground so this site might lead you a little bit more to a hybrid kind of option for your um, solar and, and geothermal but you know we may go that way anyway mm -hmm. once we start those investigations but it is tighter here okay. um, sorry I'm remembering a conversation somewhere along the line that the access road that cuts through the middle will have to be removed. It doesn't have to be removed. Um, we are showing another option where we take it out. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, we've heard a lot of, um, you know, talk about safety and having that road bisecting the site. There's a lot of pedestrians that cross it to get to the fields when they're getting out of the cars and buses. So we are having an option that takes that away. Okay. Um, and again, I we would like the traffic engineer to take a look at that and see if what we're proposing actually will will work. We don't want to make traffic worse in any way, but that's Holly's next option that she's going to show you. Yeah. And this is a three-story building, right? Yes, this is a three-story building. Yeah. Uh, Tina, Bob asked about a timeline, and you said it, like it would be a phase one project. What do you mean by that in terms of actual time? Right. So um, on this site, it'll actually be multiple phases. So to clarify, they would build the new building where we're showing it. And then in a second um, phase of construction, they would take down the existing runlet school and they would create the fields. So you're right, there would be two phases of construction versus on the broken ground site where you don't have an existing building that you're taking down. They could just build everything simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And so would the first phase be until 2028 with when it opens? It would be about 30 months of construction okay. for the new building. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then how many months for to take down the other one? You know, my guess is that they would be able to take it down in about six months because they have to do abatement and demo. And then depending on where that puts you in the time of year, sure. they may have to come back to do the field work, you know, if it ends up in December or something like that. Um, 
so potentially that could take a little bit longer. Okay. Thank you. And none of the existing building is used, like the gym or any of those, all of it goes away? That would be up to you all, but we're showing it all going away right now so that you can recreate the fields in that location. So right on the heels of that question, there was talk at one point to um, sell that building. Is there any talk of that still? Or, I mean, I know it gives us an additional field, but is it too crowded a site to have two different entities there, our school, of course? Right. I mean, we talked about that early on in terms of wh what would be the use, the current use, you know. Of course, we're always interested in being able to put property back on the tax rolls, right? Mm -hmm. So that is an option that you have. I mean, that's something that you will discuss as you would discuss any of the properties that, that the school district owns. So that is, that's an option and certainly um, a, a building that may have some um, saleability, if you will. But in terms of adding another use to that set, I think the question was if we kept on that site, would we, and I guess that's a question for the board, um, would we sell the building and have a second or third use on the site? I have a hard time saying that. That's too much on the yeah. site. Can't, can't imagine even being able to have enough parking. Yeah. Right. right. Both. Remember, too, that the high school does use these fields, right? I think um, you know that's something else that we've thought about too. There, there really is very little room in this scheme for expansion um, in the future, right? Unless you were to lose fields in the future. So I think you are um, limited to expanding the school in this location. Would this design allow for us to revisit a five through eight school, where we need to need to do that because of universal pre-K possibly coming or? Yeah, you could just add on another pod of of classrooms, and like Holly said, you would you would lose a field, right? Okay. Or alternatively, you could consider going up a story. Okay. The building could be designed, you know, for a future story, but that would be very disruptive in the future to have to build mm -hmm. an additional story. Holly, does this does this scheme schematic up here show a field on the Abbott Downing site? It does, mm -hmm. right. To, to, to replicate all the fields that are currently on the Runlet site, you do have to take part of that Abbott Downing um, sort of green space behind the building. There's a lot of space back there. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't seem like a big yeah. deal. I mean, they might not they like it, but, you know, Krista McAuliffe doesn't have fields half that size, so. <clears throat> Shall we go on to the next right. option? Let me press the right one. Mm -hmm. This is Jack's. The down. Yeah, page down, maybe. Okay. Here we go. So the second option that we've looked at on the Runlet site is eliminating that that road that currently bisects the site. This does, you know, open up sort of the whole center of the site and give you a little more green space to work with. So all of the fields now are located sort of in the center of the site. Uh, some of the fields still do overlap. The football practice and lacrosse and potentially the baseball field would all have to overlap. Um, this does allow a little more room for some outdoor learning spaces um, to the north of the building. Although, you know, this is, um, uh, sort of a limited area yeah but I think that you know relocating the road does open up some more possibilities on the site it would mean uh, re relocating the parking for Abbott Downing to the north of the building um, but we think that this is a possibility that we'd like to explore with the traffic engineer yeah that makes sense what is the parking space differential from both so I think there are currently a hundred and 10 spaces for Abbott Downing and like 130 for the um, middle school. 
And, and does it stay the same between option one and option two? Uh, we're showing the same amount of, yeah. of parking for both options. So we're showing 200 parking spaces, mm -hmm. which we think will satisfy the needs of the school on a daily basis. And if there is a large auditorium in the building, you would have to share some of the Abbott Downing parking for those large events. So instead of building 300 parking spaces, which is what you need for a 900 seat auditorium, we'll use 100 of those Abbott Downing spaces for events, share that parking. Yep. Any questions? No. Um, I correct in seeing that the overlap in this option is significantly less than the last, but there is still some existing overlap. There is still some overlap. Between yes. what looks like a lacrosse field and a baseball field. Yeah, and okay. and the football practice field too. Okay. Yeah. Thank but, you. But it's definitely less. Yeah. It is less. Yeah. Okay. And and you know there might be other configurations that we haven't explored yet, but you know this is sort of the real estate that we have to work with in this mm -hmm. option. But this okay. is a nice option. I mean, it does create more of a campus between the two schools. Mm -hmm. um, definitely more pedestrian friendly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Move on. Um, so the broken ground site. So the Millbrook and broken ground site is about thirty. 536 acres um, with an additional 59 acre parcel to the north uh, to the northwest of the Millbrook Broken Ground site. Um, that site is um, has some walking trails on it that are shown in green. Um, so this is also situated uh, has sort of a residential buffer on two sides and um, there's a pretty good uh, it's a little bit hard to read here but there is a, a pretty decent sidewalk uh, network in this neighborhood, which is shown in, in red. Uh, an area of concern is sort of circled there. Uh, there's a white circle. Um, right yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, that's a four-way intersection that we've heard is problematic, so we've been considering that as we've been looking at options for this site. We know that uh, the Millbrook and Broken Ground schools are currently accessed off South Curtisville Road, so traffic comes up South Curtisville Road, enters the site, and then exits on Portsmouth Street. I have go a ahead. question. So this is where my kiddos go to school. Yep. Um, and I find that at present, the intersection in question um, is very busy during drop-off and pickup time, mm -hmm. that's certain. Um, I think I speak for lots of parents who do drop off as I do witnessing multiple accidents right in front of the school where there hasn't been an opportunity for the city or district to mitigate parents creating like a third lane of traffic and so there's been multiple fender benders nobody's going very fast but there's still a lot of accidents and I'm always getting an email from the principal saying hey if everybody could allocate like just a little bit more time to get your kids to school that would be great. Um, but we all know that's not necessarily realistic. So I wonder if, are we planning on traffic entry to come through that same area? And if that's the case, how are we going to mitigate what is already a significant issue with traffic and accidents happening? Because I don't think human behavior is gonna change yeah. between now and then if we're being realistic. Can I, wouldn't, wouldn't the timing of the school day mitigate that? Elementary school starts at 7.45 and ends at 2.30, and middle school is 8.30 to 3, so 3.30. So elementary school, is kids get all dropped off, and then those buses go pick up the middle school students and then come back. So what happens now is you'll have two hours of traffic instead of one in, in those neighborhoods, but they won't all be there together. That's and then, fair, but I mean, then there's like two hours correct. of potential yeah, then accident all the, time. All the hell that yeah. comes at 2.30, yeah. now they all go away, Exactly. and then the buses come back, yeah. and it all happens again at 3.30. So I wonder if there's plans, I know that we are still in the process of bringing on a traffic engineer, and I know that that's going to be something that folks are, I, I know that we're going to need to look at, yep. because it is such an issue, mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if it could be explored that yeah. there might be an alternative route into the middle yeah. school area so I just yes. wanted to ask yeah. about that I know my constituents have been letting me know about that because it's more than double the students in the middle school as well Broken Ground and Millbrook is collectively they're six, almost like, as big as 600 yeah 600, 600, 600 plus. Runlet, so runlet's 900 to a thousand so. yeah, yeah. It, so it's 800, yeah. 800 at Runlet and wow. 600 plus in Millbrook and Millbrook. I didn't realize they were that close yeah yeah yeah, yeah. two big two big campuses yeah. so um can you respond 
Yeah, yeah sure. So, <laughs> so we have, so, you know, the first task, the traffic engineer is going to, he's going to come out and observe both sites, the runlet site and the broken ground site, and start with some observations and suggestions about both sites. We do have some preliminary thoughts about access to this site, and we're looking at bringing in most people on Portsmouth Street. So uh, most of the traffic would come in on Portsmouth Street. We're trying to limit um, bringing in um, anyone on South Curtisville. We might have some buses and some of the options access on South Curtisville. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, parent pickup, drop off, access to parking would all be from Portsmouth Street. Would that be for all schools or just the new middle school? The, just for the new school. Okay. Jack, could you just point at where Portsmouth yeah. Street is? Portsmouth Street is a red line, kind of on the bottom of the Let me just see if I can here. break out of this for one second, see if I can make this a little. Yeah. Look at you. Well, I, I'm working with a PDF, so <laughs> You're doing it's the a thing. little harder, but um, see if that helps. That does. That does. While we're so looking there's at Portsmouth all the way down to the intersection right. of Curtisville mm -hmm. and Portsmouth, so right along. Right. And the, the, right, no, the blue lines indicate the current traffic patterns okay. at Millbrook and Broken Ground. So traffic is entering on South Curtisville and exiting on Portsmouth Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a hot mess. Where the yeah. residential edges show on here, um, on the previous sites, we had a 25-foot buffer. Mm -hmm. what, and that's to ha the back of homes. Mm -hmm. So do we know what the buffer is here? Um, the uh, setback is shown, if you zoom in a little bit uh, closer, Jack, you'll see there's a dashed line that shows what is the, uh, the zoning setback. Uh, but when we start to look at options, we've dimensioned um, how far the building and access road are from the property line. So as we look at the three options that we're going to look at, I can you'll tell you. You'll be able you, to tell us that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think the point of this, too, is that on Runlet, there's really one spot where we can put the building. That's kind of it. We could design the roadways a little bit differently. But on this site, because it's so big, you really have multiple locations. So none of these are going to be perfect right now, but it's just to show you that there's more options here than what you have at the South Street site. Okay. Option one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yep. Oops. Hold on. <laughs> I'll try to come out of this and zoom in for you. While well, you start, starting, then I'll. Okay. Uh, so the first option, we looked at locating the building along Portsmouth Street. And the building's actually set back from Portsmouth Street about 200 feet here. So the scale is a little bit deceptive. Um, we've kept a green buffer along Portsmouth Street. There's sort of an opening there that would align with the center, with the entrance of the school. So the school would have some presence from Portsmouth Street, but still there'll be a very substantial green buffer in this option. Um, and that leaves, how much of the rest of the property does that leave? Yeah, so if you look to the right, there's sort of a key that shows the entire site. So, um, you know, more than half of that 59-acre parcel in this option remains sort of untouched. And the only thing that you're putting in that 59-acre parcel are a few athletic fields in this option. And again, that's to create the same number of fields that you have right now at the middle school, right, which, which, which are used by the high school too. So you may choose not to develop as many fields here, or you may choose to do more. That's really up to you all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to reiterate what developed here can fit on Rumble. Exactly. We, we wanted to, to show. Make them exact. Right. 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 To ask. See the actual comparison. Yeah. That makes right. sense. Right. Good. It's the same size building. It's the same number of parking spaces and the same number of, of athletic fields, with the exception of the football practice field. But that could overlap on this site, too. <coughs> um, so this really kind of creates a green um, kind of core. Um, the two buildings do have some separation. I think they're about 160 feet apart. We could also develop a nice green buffer so each school has its own identity here. Um, <coughs> we have buses coming in on South Curtisville in this option and exiting on Portsmouth Street, but the rest of the traffic and parking are accessed from Portsmouth Street. Um, there's ample room for kind of outdoor learning spaces here um, to the north of the building. And uh, this, this option also provides um, a nice opportunity to share some of the parking with Broken Ground and Millbrook if you did have um, events at the school. 
there's the other. So. 160 is the distance yeah. between um, the new middle school and Broken Ground. I'm just going to pop out us for right. a second, do a zoom in so that they yeah. can see that a little bit better. I, th I think we've also, um, we have some very nice buffers to the adjacent property. Um, the road that runs along, uh, the access road that runs along the north uh, west side of the site there is set back about 35 feet from the property line. Um, you know, and the building is probably about 100 feet from the property line on the west side here. Uh, we also, there's a nice uh, green buffer um, kind of in that southeast corner. Would the staging for this kind of option have similar issues as the existing runlet site in terms of like disruption to the existing school, like noise and mm. where the vehicles would come in and set up? Like, would that be uh, similar to the issue at runlet? Because they are, I mean, 160 feet is definitely a lot more than 45, but I was just right. curious about that. Mm. Yes. Right. In this option, it is pretty close to the broken ground school. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other options that we're going to show you are set further back. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's going to be pros and cons for each of these. We're not really at the point where I think you need to choose an option. It's just us illustrating mm -hmm. what's the potential of this site. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And in this option, if you could just zoom out again a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, are those where the new athletic fields are in the top left, is that already cleared land or are there trees there currently? There's trees there. There's trees, trees. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So this option only clears enough to create the soccer field and the baseball field that are up there. Um, and that is where a lot of the trails kind of converge together between those two fields. Um, but again, it's not putting a building there. So people could still find their way to the trails. You know, there could be signage right off the edge of those fields that say, you know, trail this way, trail that way, kind of thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There is a really nice opportunity at this site to really introduce, you know, a joy of being in nature to middle school kids, you know, teaching them how to use this trail network. Um, they're at a great age to be outdoors and really, you know, exploring and enjoying it. Yeah, so. I will say the advantage of, for Broken Ground and Millbrook kiddos is that they're in the woods all the time right. for their PE classes. When I'm out walking the dogs on my break, I'll run into classes yeah. on the trail. So teachers are already incorporating that as a part of their learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I will speak to the green space being a huge advantage. Yeah. And the geothermal and solar opportunities on the site compared to the Renland site? Right, so you would be able to have a, a larger well field here potentially. You could go full geothermal. Um, you would also have an area potentially to put in a solar field if you know you want it to be net positive for the building potentially. Um, so that there is more opportunity here. I know that when Oyster River just built their new middle school, part of what they did as far as a solar field is concerned is where they park their buses. They had an overhang or just they had solar yep. so that you didn't have to plow out your buses at the same time. <coughs> so is that something that we've been considering as an option as part of this uh, development? Yeah, you could definitely put um, covered parking in and put solar over your parking spaces so along the, the front there of the building potentially. Remember, our buses are over and public. But I mean, yeah, for sure. But if parking spaces can right. be can Couple. double yep. as yes. a space for solar, for sure. Yes. Okay. Want to go on to option two? Yeah. So the second option locates the buildings sort of north of Millbrook and Broken Ground, and allows you to develop fields along. Portsmouth Street. You still have a nice green buffer along so Portsmouth Street. Um, this this option, I think, limits the impacts on the field on the walking trails, um, right? Because all of the walking trails essentially remain intact in this option, and the parking has been located so it could um, people could use the parking on the weekends to access the trail network. Um, uh, there is buses come in and out again. Excuse me? I'm buses sorry. and, and oh. parents. Yep. Uh, so in this option, we have buses um, coming in on Portsmouth Street and exiting on South Curtisville. Um, 
parent pickup drop off comes in on Portsmouth Street and exits back onto Portsmouth Street. So again, all of the parent pickup drop off is, is routed onto Portsmouth Street. Hmm. How far is that set back to the length of that stretch? From the beginning of Portsmouth to the parking, sorry. Oh, goodness. Uh, well, oh, a that's a couple hundred field. feet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and from the property line, um, that access road is 35 feet from that western property line, and that parking area is, I think, about 50 feet from the um, property line. Thank you. Yeah. So was consideration given to have buses have some sort of turnaround and then exit back out on Portsmouth rather than going through the neighborhood on Curtisville? That is also a possibility. And again, that's where we want to engage the traffic, traffic engineer. Guy. And, and um, there's plenty of room to do that on this site. So that's definitely a possibility. <coughs> You're just, you know, developing a little bit more of a paved right. road within your site. But Might make our neighbors possible. a little happier. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Will yeah. the traffic engineer look at the existing traffic patterns at Millbrook and Broken Ground and make suggestions on whether there are improvements that would be nice yes they will be looking at the existing traffic patterns great thank on you both sites uh, you know Pam from another point of view over at broken ground in Millbrook we've um, we have issues with parking um, you know often when I'm over there I park down in the maintenance area because there are no parking spaces if I'm going into Millbrook uh -huh. um, and um, at Broken Ground, um, there are a few at the far end. I mean, you could park at the far end of Broken Ground and walk over to Millbrook. That doesn't hurt anybody, but mm -hmm. for convenience sake, um, parking is an issue um, specifically at Millbrook. So there's an opportunity to expand parking with this project, too, if, if it was, you know, the site was chosen. Mm -hmm. That is something I would caution when planning. Um, it seems as though parking didn't receive the attention it probably should have in all of the mm. elementary schools 10 years yeah. ago no kidding. Um, that have created all kinds of problems and it would be great to make sure that we're looking at the actual numbers of cars and people that need to be there and being sure that there's adequate right. parking for those people. But I understand for this exercise you were trying to do the same yes. right. as mm -hmm. we could do right. as a maximum mm -hmm. on the current runlet site. So that's yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. Right. I mean, we are looking at providing substantially more parking than you have at the existing yeah. runlet school. So I think we're you know adding an additional fifty spots over what you have on runlet. So sometimes, this is an increase. Yeah. Sometimes some of the challenges. Is when you acquire more, um, you know, SPED teachers and more services for students over the years that, you know, you need more parking, you need to expand. So mm -hmm. in this site, you do have space to expand, which is a plus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Runlet, again, when we looked at it, is a little bit more challenging. But this, this has expansion potential. It also has expansion potential for, you know, pre-K. If, if you go to the full day pre-K and you need to have another, mm -hmm. you know, building, that could be part of the planning of the site at this phase so that you know we don't just develop this in a vacuum we kind of look at the bigger picture you know 10 years down the road or whenever that is i'm so sorry i didn't ask this when we were looking at the previous options but i'm curious about playground structures and <coughs> playground spaces still being incorporated we're spending a lot of time talking about athletic fields but i don't want to lose sort of our personal visual of where kiddos are going to be playing for recess. Would you mind sort of explaining where those things are going to go, if you don't mind? Sure. I mean, um, you know, we're showing outdoor classroom space. Um, we can also put in playground space if that's something that, you know, you all want to see for the middle school folks. No, I'm, I'm just specifically speaking towards like Millbrook and Broken Ground. Okay, if we're existing using playground. existing space Got to it. build yes. athletic fields, are we sacrificing playground space, I'm sure that's not the case, but I think it would be valuable to have that visual right. yep. so we can see that those, w how those spaces might be impacted as well. That's right, that's a good point. We should put, put those on the diagram yeah. as existing. You, you can yeah, see one of the existing play areas is sort of uh, north of the soccer fields between the two fields are sort of a like a brown brownish oval. That is one of the play areas. Um, For 
Public for the existing broken ground in Millbrook School. Yes. The document, that would be great. Yeah, that would yes, be super exactly. Helpful. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I you. but I think there's plenty of room on this site. In in some cases you might want to relocate some of those existing play spaces, but I think this site offers many possibilities to relocate those play areas. Mm -hmm. okay. And even expand them if there's need to expand them. Mm -hmm. Well if we end up having to add fifth grade at some point fifth graders certainly still benefit from recess and play structures. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, adults do too. Big well, I know, <laughs> but my, I know. I, I think I think all four, I think Rellin should have playground stuff. Yeah, at least like outdoor space to be present. Yeah. And I understand that out, outdoor classrooms can do that mm -hmm. for sure, but outdoor options for, I mean, if we're gonna provide an exceptional education, I know mm -hmm. that we've done a lot of thinking around this and have already done a lot of the legwork, but just saying, everybody benefits from casual outdoor space that is unstructured. Absolutely. Right. So we have one more option to share with you. Should we move on to the third yes, option? Yes, Thank you. Okay. Um, so the third option moves the school sort of deeper back into the site, which has you know some some uh, positives and some negatives. Um, you know, you, you will have a, some increase in infrastructure costs by moving the building further into the site because, you know, you have to travel a little bit further with your utilities, mm -hmm. but it does offer some, you know, additional opportunities to make these indoor-outdoor connections m maybe a little more impactful than they would be further um, at the front of the site. So um, in this option, I think we have buses um, coming in on Portsmouth Street. So right now, I'm sorry, buses come in. I can't see the arrows myself here. Buses come in on South Gertisville and exit on Portsmouth. Um, and then parent pick up and drop off again, come in and out on Portsmouth Street. Um, the athletic fields are new athletic fields to the north of the building. Um, so you are um, eating into a little more of the sort of the trail network in this option. Uh, but this also does offer offer the opportunity to access those fields um, from the north of the site. So there's a potential to get another access road and some additional parking in from uh, South Curtisville Road to the north. Do you see where that is on that maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think what this yeah. option does is it does allow the two schools to develop really unique identities. It creates more of a green buffer space between the two schools. So I think they're they're more of, of you know two separate schools rather than sort of a uh, two schools that are not part of the same campus. Um, it, it also maintains the green buffer along Portsmouth Street. So you know you sort of do lose sort of. Um, the sort of uh, identity from Portsmouth Street of the school, but you know you maintain that green buffer. And again, I think our, their buffer is all the way around. We've got a 35-foot buffer to that road on the west side of the site. Um, the building is, I think, about 200 feet from the closest property line, 260. Um, so I think that you know, uh, sort of less impact to the abutters. Um, you know the other the other thing with this is the trail network picks up right outside of the school, so classes can kind of come straight outside and access that trail network. So it's sort of very accessible for students and faculty. This one probably has the least amount of impact on the Millbrook and Broken Ground School too. I right. Mean, this is like a separate building site for the mm -hmm. most part. Right. Um, the contractor would have an easier time building this. They'd have more lay down space. You know, mm -hmm. they're kind of tucked away from the kids on the other side of the site. Right. You also wouldn't be impacting any of the play areas adjacent to Millbrook and Broken Ground. So those would remain as is, and the existing fields remain. Um, the parking here again could um, offer access to those fields on the weekend. And there's plenty of room for kind of outdoor learning spaces adjacent to the building. And of the 55 acres? 59. Uh, 59. 59. How much of the, would that take up? I think it's a little less than half. So if you zoom out, there's, um, like a, there's kind of a key version. plan on the right side here. So that's the whole 59 acre parcel, the orange, that orange line. So I think it's a little less than half of the site you'd be impacting. And this is the one that develops the most of that parcel. Right. 
So I think with the other options, you know, you're developing far less than half of that 59 acres. Is there a significant price difference in the, in the three options? It's a great question. <laughs> and there it is. Um, some of the costs at this site will be related to utilities, like Holly was saying, how far in you have to bring them. Um, if there's a need for, you know, a, a, a water pump, potentially if the pressure's not good enough, um, that will relate in some cost. Um, and then clearing the land, of course. Um, and in terms of the price difference between rebuilding at Runlet and the most expensive, these options are they comparable is there a difference yeah it's a great question I don't know that off the top of my head we could we could get some information on cost um, if we you know if we wanted to we'd have to engage our cost estimator mm -hmm. to do that mr. Credo so uh, feels like I'm being negative but I apologize in advance <coughs> I, I like the idea of having the buildings, you know, more secluded and th the advantages of having them further and further. What I worry about is vandalism. And so I wonder what do architects and builders automatically put into buildings to keep that from happening? I, and I'm thinking of an occasion where some of our youngsters jumped onto a smaller roof, onto a large roof at one of our schools at one point. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think about that and lighting and... Sure. Yeah, there's lots of opportunities. You can have um, security cameras all over the parking areas. You can have them out in the fields. You can have them on the exterior of the building. You can have lighting that's set up so that, kind of like you have at your house, if someone drives into the site, the lights come up. You know, they can be put on dimmer so that you're not that's keeping them on all the time. Um, I think those are your, probably your two, you know, best defenses. We will certainly design the exterior so that you can't climb onto low roofs and get into any hatches or anything like that. Um, and yeah, and you can always, you can put some fencing around the schools, but on a site this big, if you're gonna, you know, develop the fields like this, you probably wouldn't fence the whole perimeter. Sure. But you could have, you know, access gates <coughs> at roadways, potentially if you wanted to limit how much traffic was coming in there at certain hours. Thank you. Yep. In terms of what's the timeline for choosing an option on one of the sites after we've chosen a site? Um, you know, I think what we need to do first, uh, this is what we started with, is sort of think about our goals for the site, right? Mm -hmm. That will help you ultimately make a decision on which of these two locations are the best. And then after that, shortly after that, we'll work towards a single option on the site. So I don't think you need to choose any options tonight. I think you're still thinking big picture about which site is going to be the best for the new middle school. Right. A quick question on, um, as a former teacher that uses those trails, or has used those trails in the past, um, a couple of areas that we always would go to is the beaver pond. Mm -hmm. And that has been included in the study and there would be no effect on the beaver pond is what you were understanding um the whole parcel is included in the study with um fishing fishing game right to find out if there's any endangered species or any plants of concern on that area um, so only endangered species not perhaps species that are living there currently like beavers like beavers <laughs> and they're really cute is there a beaver relocation program put in place <laughs> well no yeah, right. and the deer and and oh, sure. there's tons of animals out there sure i mean i don't think that the construction project would be adversely affecting all of the animals there because we're pretty much keeping it to a very small corner of the site so it's, it's not like you're clear cutting the whole um, piece of property, but we would work closely with the state departments to make sure that we're not, you know, harming anybody that's out okay. there. Okay. And then there's some historical, I believe there's some historical parts to the trails out there. Oh, like the Batchelder Mill stuff? Yeah. I feel like that's significantly... But we wouldn't by. be disturbing anything on the way to those or in... It, it might be helpful to go back to the first slide where we look at the broken ground site because just to be clear, we're not impacting the conservation area that is to the west of 
the site that's okay. owned by yeah. the school district. That's what I wanted to make sure that so we were. So you can yeah. see there on the left side, there's still a substantial conservation land yes. uh -huh. um, that's to the west of the site. We're only looking at that 59 acre parcel that's owned by the district. So there would be no impact on that conservation land that's adjacent. Okay. And that trail network, you know, would remain intact and accessible through the broken ground site. And the beaver pond is in the conservation land, or is it on the? Um, it, no, it's actually up south Curtisville more. Right, I think it's actually to the right of our parcel. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe yeah. right on so, the corner yeah, in that there's area. There's a dirt road. They're developing homes out there right, right now. Right now, yeah. They are, yeah. Um, okay. so, so, but I think. Or the, beaver I mean, might be gone uh, anyway. Other than, yeah, being disturbed by you know, human interaction. But there are South Curtisville Road trails that yeah. we're not even seeing on For here sure. that you need right. to continue yeah, yeah. past the, I think you can see where the utilities are out to the far right mm -hmm. you continue out that way there's still an additional oh, yeah, trail right. network that i think connects to the larger body of water that you're thinking of okay all right this yeah. might be a question jack might know the answer to better but if we chose to rebuild at runlet and dispose of this land do we know how it's zoned um if i remember uh from the discussion with the city because we attended the um they have every Thursday of engineering meetings, mm -hmm. all the various. Similar to this development, you could put this development on that property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Something similar. So from a conservation standpoint. Right, we're actually, we're actually doing them a favor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> I have another question. Um, if the broken ground site is chosen and we are left with a remediated like open patch of land would that sort of negate our need to build new fields if we could maintain fields at what is presently the runlet site could we sort of get away with not building new fields if we know we've got 30 acres that are going to be empty does that make sense? It does make sense. Um, so there's a division between the high school use and the middle school use. And from what we understand, the middle school kids um, still need some fields for their middle school sports. Mm -hmm. You know, you might, maybe you might not rebuild the practice field for football if that isn't one of their sports, but you would still want to create some fields here. Okay. Are you so, talking about the broken ground site or the runlet site? I'm talking, if, like, if we build a middle school on the broken ground site, oh, and then we take down the old runlet on the runlet site, we're, o we're left with an open and site. That, yeah, and then it would be a question for the board about whether we could take, afford that's whether we would, field spot. Whether we would take it down or sell the building right. or, I mean. Or transport. I, I'm thinking of yeah, transportation. Transporting kids. Yeah, kids yeah, kids yeah like from one site to another. Yeah. That would be yeah. tedious. No, that's a good point. Yeah, I think that's about why that. I those feel so far away. Mm -hmm. That's like a, another People step on a division, our decision tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> it's it's yeah. endless yeah. numbers yeah. of decisions yeah. to be made with this. Just reminding you that we're dealing with um, adolescents and middle school, and you know, like uh, uh, Mr. Croto just said, you keep them close to you. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, and so uh, I, I hear what you're saying is a cost-saving measure, but mm -hmm. we would want to have our eyes right with them and not on buses and traveling every day. Okay. So we would have to bus the high school students though to this. I think <laughs> sure. Some of them. Mm -hmm. There's the high schools have used the broken ground fields. Um, I can remember lacrosse coming over in the spring to practice and yeah, they're pretty much over at uh, Runlet now. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Maybe there'll be room at the new memorial field. Oh, Maybe. honey. Oh, oh, my God. One major project at a time. But, but you know, don't, don't dismiss that. Memorial field. One, one of the thoughts around that field, and I don't want to get into that project. We will hear more about that later. But lacrosse was one of the areas that they were talking about and how they can reconfigure memorial field to address because there's an incredible interest in lacrosse. The board, so. mm -hmm. You're right. If they redesign the track, they could have a lacrosse field that's in right. it and a football field. That's like right. yeah, that's if right. they had 80 meter straights and they 120 curves, right? So they could, put it in they could have an Olympic style lines. track. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All right. I love it. Track. <laughs> Do you 
want to um can you go Oof. back to yep. where we were yep. and then advance one side Let's see oops so there i go up, oh, go back up here oh yeah. yeah, good right there <laughs> one more right here we okay. Go. okay okay so we thought that it might be useful to have a matrix where you can see these options um kind of together and kind of understand the impact on the uh, green space um, at the broken ground site and um, how that how, how these options impact kind of the overall site but I think you know more importantly there are many opportunities at broken ground um, we're a little more limited on the South Street site with where the building can be located which is why we're only showing two options here but you know the, the goal tonight really was to to help develop this matrix um, so if you go um, mm -hmm. advance one side. And it's a three-story building at both sides. It's a three-story um, building at both sides, correct, right. And same size building on both sides. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we took a stab at developing this, this uh, kind of list of criteria for uh, selecting a site, and we wanted your input tonight on this list. You know, we're not sure we've captured, you know, all of your goals, but we think that, you know, these are some of the, the goals that we've heard um, in previous meetings. Just a quick question. I'm not sure if this was you. Kathleen, did you put this together or did? We worked with our friend, us, HMFH, and our people. communications. So yeah. for the pros and the cons, I was curious why underneath the broken ground site, yeah. the approximately I was going to ask the same question. And why it's a con <laughs> that <laughs> on the existing runlet site Sorry. that more people live on oh, that. Yeah, why is that a con? Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask the exact same question. So <laughs> I'll let that get passed out and I'll explain okay. how we okay. came up with that. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, I guess it's a 40% as a pro. Well, yeah. oh, it's not an exact, exact science, but we tried. What we did is we took where the fifth graders attend elementary school now and totaled up those fifth graders and then totaled up the ones that are on the other side to go to Broken Ground and Millbrook, and that's how we came up with the percentages. So if you look at the bottom, it says it's based on students attending ADS, BMS, and CMS. Okay. Now, Beaver Meadow is a little tricky because they could be coming from Mountain Road. So, again, it's not an exact science, but if you take everybody, technically it's on this side of the river, right? Because right? we didn't cross over through the school. So, that totaled 154 fifth graders. Then, when you take Broken Ground and Millbrook and put it together, it's 116. That's 270. So, so I, I'm not arguing with those no, numbers. No. It's yes. more so about what is the reason that that's a con on the. Would it be busing? That 57% no, of families live on that side. And I'm just curious oh, why one I'm, is a pro. Yeah, one like is one's a con. The 47% is a pro. I think it's a pro. transportation thing. Transportation. Transportation. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Because right now you're accessing more of Got those it. kids. Yeah. Because of the density. Thank you. Gotcha. You know, I think one thing we should add, I would add to our location discussions is operational costs and whether, you know, it's buses, um, whether we would need to have an option for more than two buses based on you know crossing Loudon Road um, you know where that radius goes there might be areas that are technically in our walking distance walking distance that, that we do completely. not want students yeah. walking and we should mm -hmm. you know err on the side of keeping you know right. limiting those impacts mm -hmm. well, and we did talk about that because we knew that just the bridge area and the walking distance yep. that would affect kid youngsters and we knew that we certainly didn't want them um, doing that and it would, would cross yeah, have to go over a highway <laughs> I also I think don't want to do that yeah yeah in terms of safety so. I also think we should think about it in terms of impact on the neighborhood that if a lot of the students who don't get to have a bus get dropped off they don't walk we know that from Runlet right. now um, mm -hmm. with the few, you know, the limited number of students who are walking. And so we should consider that in terms of how we, you know, but we should also consider the cost of that in our pro con mm -hmm. columns. Um, and uh, a couple of us, so Kara and I and Jack as well walked um, to the one and a half mile perimeter, the theoretical perimeter mm -hmm. that kiddos might be walking. But now that we acknowledge that it's by the drive and not as the crow flies, that might change the pathway. But I do understand, um, correct me if I'm wrong, 
that East Side Drive is actually owned by the state of New Hampshire and not by the city. So if we are expecting kiddos to be walking on East Side Drive, that means collaboration with the DOT to make those sidewalks ADA accessible, um, put in new crosswalks. So I feel like that's a cost that we need to be addressing. And if we don't want kiddos walking over the highway for many reasons, um, does that also mean that we decide to change our policy as a board to accommodate transportation from any communities or any neighborhoods that are on the opposite side of 393. Um, so I just want to be sure that we're keeping those things in mind as we're having this conversation. Is East Side Drive owned by the state? Are there sidewalks? Yeah, it's true, 132. Are there sidewalks on? There are. Uh, on, one, on one side. There's yeah. on one yeah. side. And they're not consistent. You come up from like East well, Concord and there's a sidewalk, but then it stops at Portsmouth Street. Because well, the state maybe won't, will not install no, it stops at, uh, sidewalks as a general rule, uh, and they right. do not maintain yeah, the sidewalks. Yeah, that's the problem. So that would yeah, have that to be discussed. Yeah, that would be downtown by Friendly's that a lot of the Friendly Kitchen people, that never gets plowed or anything. Like because ugly. there was a huge issue. Because it's yes. state. It's, so yeah. that's a huge, yes. safe walks to school yeah. uh -huh. won't matter to the yeah. Yeah. DOT. That's a city thing. Oh, thank, thank you, you. I'm going to drop myself right on our one on side drive. Oh, this is super helpful. Thank you. I think it's on the other side. Yeah, yeah, this is where we crossed yeah. all together, yeah. and we moved to the left to walk up towards 393. Right. Um, so, like, right around the 55 and older community, mm -hmm. the, the sidewalks are perfectly fine. It's when you get closer to the overpass that we notice that there's a real issue, especially, like, just trimming vegetation so that you can walk without having to duck your head. I know that's real nitpicky, but it is part of how we get kids to school safely is a um, e easy point. Of, I think, yeah, actually when you cross here, you notice that the sidewalk gets significantly narrower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like that means a conversation with the state. And you know, like Pam just said, as a point of order, they're not gonna do that for us. So that's really limiting in our ability to create safe walking space. Because walkability is one of our do things right. yeah, that we've addressed yeah. as a value. So. so. I do think the city maintains those sidewalks now. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, it's check, a conversation though. with the uh, city and the check. state. Yeah. I'm gonna check on that. Yeah, and I highly, if folks have the ability to do so, just taking that walk is really helpful to understand uh, what our oh. expectation is presently. <laughs> that's what Don't jump that's off what the bridge. Yeah. 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 Not going back to back so, yeah. so he's really talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a point. Did you go? Where were you? And then if we are going to widen those spaces <laughs> over 393, if we're going to consider having kids walk there, then we're altering an overpass, which the state's just not going to do. I mean, if we're being realistic. And that intersection with Hazen also gets a little crazy. Oh, it gets Oh, sweet. that's mental. Yeah, yeah it was a little <laughs> nerve-wracking for sure. As we were standing there, it was pouring rain when we did it too, so. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. Kids have to walk to school in that way. Yeah, it's true. And there's, I mean, there's, a lot of neighborhoods right there where kiddos are very savvy as far as these neighborhoods are concerned this is where they live it's where they're spending their summer this is their city um, so I, I'm not questioning their ability to navigate to school they already do it um, as far as a lot of the broken ground kiddos are concerned but our due diligence it requires a bunch of changes mm -hmm. And in comparison, the South Street site, the existing runlet site, that one is would check the box better for the walkability. Yeah. Um, yeah, at present, the way it's set up, yes. Okay. So as part of the, this exercise, we were going to kind of go through our list of site goals and sort of say, mm -hmm. this one checks the box, this one yeah. maybe doesn't, or it doesn't now, but we could, you know, with money, make it check yeah, that box exactly and I like Pam's suggestion of checking in on how many kiddos are actually walking versus driving mm -hmm. I think that's a good metric for us to have anyway mm -hmm. but that's that's some inquiry that we really need to do I mean I think it's taking advantage of our policy right so it's state law that we have to provide mm -hmm. in least that distance but nothing prevents us from expanding it. from expanding it Correct. And I think so we should look at those options as we yeah have. we could change our policy as a board to accommodate anything we want as far as kids are concerned yeah. and getting them to school safely 
we, you know, we do make those decisions on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not, I don't bring them all to you, yeah. but um, I can think over the course of time if it's a road that's isolated, right? Um, not a lot of ho homes on it. It's just maybe wooded with just a few homes on it. Mm -hmm. You know, you often don't want youngsters walking down that street to a bus stop at the end of the road. That kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we make decisions about whether that's safe or not and send the bus in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they should be walking out to that stop, but we're doing that a lot. Yeah. We have always have calls from families that have particular issues. Sometimes it's around medical issues, and we make changes to that one and a half or two mile based on a family's need. So mm -hmm. I don't. No, I don't but I think we're talking you, about a more dramatic. Big, yeah. yeah, this is a this would be a very big shift as opposed to the smaller right. accommodations. But just that know that we do yeah. make those accommodations of course, for of course. families and youngsters. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want kids walking across 393 mm -hmm. or on East Side Drive. It's a major commuter road. Yeah, and I actually and I also think bus. You know, if we can get people to go back to using the buses post COVID, that um, that yeah. would reduce help, help traffic. reduce traffic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I suppose we're our own worst enemies because we ask parents to help us during. Well, that's what remember? I mean. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm still doing it. it. <laughs> and, and, and what now we need to tell them to stop. Yeah, yeah. Stop <laughs> now I have to tell them to stop doing that. I don't know how that Although my old friends old. who drive their middle schoolers say, you know, it's <laughs> often the only time they get any information out of their middle schoolers. So they value important. that time. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the few times the youngsters in the car. They have nowhere to go. They have to listen. Mm -hmm. So I suppose parents, and especially if they're on their way to work, you know, it's, yep. a, it's become mm -hmm. part of their um, just their family dynamic. Yeah. Um, another thing that I'm, I know we're going to be talking about, but I want to bring to the table because I've heard it out in the wild, is um, folks are concerned about duration of time on the bus for either site. So if we could address what rides look like for kiddos, I think that would be helpful, and at least the community understanding what kind of changes um, we're thinking of making. Anyone else have anything that they want added to this worksheet? Can I call in about midnight? Because that's when I usually have these. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is. I think this is a living document, mm -hmm. and that we yeah. cannot, we can continue to add our criteria. Is this something that we're expected to like just check off right now here together? Yeah, we didn't ask different. you to do that because we wanted you to think about all okay. of the information you got. Right. But it's a tool to say these are the essential things that we need to continue to think about uh -huh. as we, we try to decide between these two sites. Um, you know, somebody will say, uh, is there another site? Well, you know that there's been a thorough uh -huh. um, review of available sites. Both Jack and Matt did that and have, and we continue to do that. I mean, if something comes up, we take we do take a look at it, um, but um, I, I think we've we've somewhat narrowed it down here uh -huh. to um, to these two sites. So. Uh -huh. I, would, I would have one addition as well, since we are looking at broken ground to just protect natural spaces as much as we can. I like that. Yeah. Like obviously there are certain situations. Right, but it does. But it doesn't mean that we but can't I don't it. protect natural spaces at Runley because yeah. there aren't any. <laughs> I mean, I'm not yeah. trying to see no. them. No, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's, the beavers might have to be left. I was thinking about, too, that um, you know, having a school be a central part of a community structure is something that attracts me to the current Runlet site. You know, the kids can go down the street to the store or head over to Rollins. You know, it's it feels like the kids are part of the community and, and where I see like especially option three just feels so far away that mm -hmm. you know people don't even really see what's going on at the middle school day to day so I don't know if it's really like a check one or the other because Runlet obviously gives that um, option in a way that, that, that I mean this huge green space the space is incredible but it does away. feel far away that was a big issue in Exeter <clears throat> years ago. They built a new high school, probably five, 10 years ago now. I don't know how many years. But Exeter High School was downtown Exeter. Mm -hmm. Kids could probably walk everywhere. 15. 
And um, <clears throat> beautiful, you know, beautiful building, athletic fields, everything all right there. And then the new school is across Route Eight. Uh, what goes to the beach? One hundred one. One hundred one. Mm -hmm. Way out, the, and it's it's all by itself. It's gorgeous and huge and beautiful. And the first few years, the transition was really rough because the kids were used to going to the sub shop for lunch and having all that freedom. And now they were sort of stuck there. Now it's a phenomenal place. So it's not the same, but it's a similar situation. Well, and I would add that. Runlet is very much part of its current neighborhood. Yes. You know, we have a whole other set of neighborhoods on the other side of the river, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that it could be part of right? as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't let them leave campus during the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. true. We are we're talking about a middle school versus a high school. Yeah, but yeah. The, the idea was that it was very local. It was right in the middle of everything, and now yeah. it's in the middle of nowhere, yeah. which is what she was But I don't Everybody think, saw it. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think this, I mean. It's a really good thing to could, think about. Could, it depends on how we cited but even if we right. cite it further back it's still not in the middle of nowhere it's next right. to two of our existing mm -hmm. schools and existing neighborhoods mm -hmm. but there is no uh, you can't walk to keach park from there no yeah. like there's right. anything anywhere you went well i mean you have the woods and all the trails but you know, it's just two very different realities i think i i get i'm undecided sometimes i i wonder yeah. if we could ask mr richard to come up and share his thoughts. I know he recently was part of a new building of a middle school. That's great, you were. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I invoked during this <laughs> uh, Just to introduce myself, Jay Rashad, the middle school principal. I'm happy to answer any questions. I have experienced this, have friends who have experienced similar situations. You mentioned cooperative middle school that was built 15 years ago or so, and also Exeter High School. Um, so I guess what's your question? <laughs> so what school were you involved with? Uh, so uh, Oyster River Middle School. Oh yeah, okay. Right. So yeah, we started that visioning back in 2014, and we moved in uh, February of 21. And it's beautiful. It, it is beautiful. Yeah. It's a gorgeous school. Yep. And that it was co-located with an existing. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what we did was we were in the old ORMS, I called. Uh, it's funny, similar construction, that building was built in 1955, so when I walk the halls of Runlet, uh, it's very, you know, it's fascinating, actually, all the fixtures, all the construction ma materials are all from the same time period. So we were in the old facility, stayed there as they constructed the new facility, and then as soon as the new facility was ready, uh, we actually moved in after February break in... Um, so we, it was in the winter, we moved over, and then they demolished the old building. Yeah. And that's where we built our field, which we used, to, you know, we did a field turf, so. How disruptive was the building and teaching at the same time? It was complicated, it was definitely disruptive. Um, I mean, someone asked a really good question tonight in regards to, which is very important, are we gonna lose part of the current building? So for example, we lost, we didn't anticipate losing our gym, but I was fortunate enough or lucky enough to have to inform our PE staff that we were gonna lose our gym, so we had to you know, use different sites uh, for PE class. But you know, everything's doable. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, you know, the kids are very positive, but you know, it was definitely challenging with field space for you know, quite, quite some time and you know, these are two separate projects, and I'll give you an example. Like, I, you know, I to come over uh, to visit a little early Superintendent Murphy. You know, I noticed the high school football teams practicing there, the soccer team, and things like that. That's not something we had to deal with, you know, in Oyster River. And can you remind, I was there with the superintendent during construction, but what was your buffer between the old building and the new construction? It was close. So... Mm -hmm. Our recess area was probably about the size of this parking lot right out here, literally. So we had it fenced off, and it was it was very limited. But you know, one of the projects like that, you know, again, there's light at the end of the tunnel. But it, it was it was challenging. But you know, if you know me, and you know, I always focus on having a positive mindset, and you know, the kids were good. But you know, it's definitely challenging. Mm -hmm. And your school, as I recall from visiting, is set back quite a bit too, isn't it? 
uh, set the back. New, the new Oyster River School is set back. Was set back. It definitely was set back because when you have a very tight site like you know Runlet does, in, in any site you know, traffic studies and engineers they do a much you know things the world's different and that's a good thing so things there's a lot more uh, safety codes in terms of roads and sidewalks and ADA compliance so we definitely were set back and you know that made a difference And the field was actually in front of the building so when I actually looked out my former office or walked out the front door the field was right there Oh, and then Mr. Can, can we go back to the criteria? Oh, okay. one second. Sorry. <laughs> uh, when we, when you look at the criteria, is there anything that you would add extra based on your previous experience? And obviously, that's a different Good time period for evaluating. But yeah, I, I didn't look at it no that problem. way. And I know that's putting you on the spot. Oh, that's all right. I mean, I think it's just about, you have some here, just the sustainability aspects of a new facility with the geothermal, the solar, uh, encouraging parents and staff to have, you know, electric vehicles down the road. You know, athletic fields are important. Uh, superintendent already mentioned about, you know, you want your adolescents on site, so, you know, you want to feel like a field, something that's flexible, and also a thing I would also add, just, like community opportunities for things where the whole community can use the facility on weekends, whether, or the gym, whether it's pickleball courts inside the gym yeah, or pickleball. things like that. So having opportunities for the whole community to have access to the building. Mr. Cotton? Yeah. Oh, I thought you had something. Thomas, Mr. Croto? So Jonathan just put you on the spot. I'm going to follow suit a little bit if there's one if there's one piece of advice you could give this board given your experience so finish the sentence of whatever you do make sure you do it right <laughs> no, 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 said, no no I know but when I when I say that when you look at a facility you know you need to really think of the kids needs you also need to be forward thinking too not just about what the kids needs are right now but down the road and uh, having gone through that process from 2014 until when we moved into the new building what I share with my staff is when we collaborate on the on the project meeting all of us and my staff and the community what we want to be thinking about is not just what we want for our kids right now but what we want is when we're all gone and we will be um, you know 40 years down the road we want the residents of Concord in our capital to come back and say you know something the people who worked together 40 years ago to plan this facility wow they were forward-thinking in did it right yeah. because we've all seen projects whether it's our own houses when we think geez I wish I kind of had done something a little bit different in this bathroom well once those studs are in and the frames up it's too late so it just being very very thoughtful about that everybody and you know that was a big push I had with my staff you know I said when the people come back we want the library media center for example I would speak with my school librarian let's just not think about the needs right now for our kids right now in the moment let's think about down the road so when you're gone and retire the next person that comes into your role says wow that person whoever designed this library media center was very thoughtful and forward-thinking so it's not going to be perfect but I think that's the mindset we want to have good advice mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you anyone else thank you mr. shard hey you bet yeah, it's great to be here thanks for being here yes. well, welcome yeah. Yeah, welcome to Concord yes <laughs> um, one other thing I feel like I've been talking a lot which is not usual for me in meetings but um, <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about the ways in which kiddos experience their 12 years with us. If we do it all right, then it's 12 years with us. Um, and how presently eight of those 12 years for our east side kiddos are spent transitioning to the west side of town. Um, and I've also spoken to west siders who say the only reason they come to the east side is to use Target. Um, or to just access a big box store, they come in the back way and then they leave. 
And so one of the things that I'm considering in this decision making is how can we utilize these spaces to knit our city together in a way that welcomes more community members to the east side to see how wonderful our neighborhoods are, to understand that we are a larger whole city and can we offer kiddos an opportunity to come be on the east side for four of those 12 years? Um, it's some, you know, it's not the three. final decision maker for me. Six um, and eight. During that three years. Oh, well, She's regardless. She's fifth grade, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in fifth, fifth grade. grade. Look at that, it's only three years, so it's not so much of a sink. No, Semantics aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Can, can this be an opportunity to be a uniting opportunity for our city as opposed to being continually separated by a river and a highway? I'm going to add to that in a supportive way in that we also, when you look at the demographics of our city, um, a lot of the folks that live on the east side of the river have little ability to get to the west side of town other than in a school bus on the way to Runlet or Concord High. Yeah, thank you for um, that. So I'm in a foundation I'm creating very, very involved in the arts community. and. You know, I think of all these programs I'd like to sponsor, and really what I need to do is buy a big bus yeah. and call it the Molly Mobile and go get all these kids and bring them to RB Productions and bring them to all these. I'm thinking mostly of the arts right now. This, the Concord Parks and Rec up there has been such a great change. That was in Whites Park forever. Mm -hmm. And when we did the elementary schools, that whole business worked up there. Amazing, rec, you know, that was a good move. And at the time, there were people that were like, no, the city's down here. Well, no, the city's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and the part of me that really prefers the, the east side for the building is to do just that, to bring all the longtime west side of the river, downtown Concord people up there to see the neighborhoods and the schools and the kids. And there's a big, beautiful theater that can actually house a lot of people to watch a play there in walking distance. Because a lot of the kids that live around there could walk or just Families on the weekends could walk to Runlet Middle School if it were up there yeah. to see a play or, or be involved in something like that. So that part of it, it appeals to me because I think, I'm not trying to be you know narrow-minded, but I think a lot of families here have easier access to go someplace on the weekend than a lot of families there. Agreed. So I, that equ equity-wise, it would make sense to put it up there. Mm -hmm. So that goes in my head a lot. Yeah. You know, buildings and sizes and athletic fields aside. Agreed. Who are we talking about? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any? I think there was a last slide. Yeah, bring that up. That had the public hearing yeah. information, and I was just going to ask. I, I understand yeah, yeah. why okay. we put Runlet as the location, but Runlet is does does not allow live streaming of the meeting. Um, no, what we have to do is we have to record it and then play it. Yeah. The and the space in there is not great for hearing it's people. True. So I, I don't know. I, I would I just phrase it as whether we think that's the best space for the meeting. And if everyone's asked, that will we'll leave that. But. All right. Well, Obviously, we could set up. Um, what about the high school? Can we make that, that that's school? what I was thinking. Uh, check in with the uh, use of the high school on the on that day, the twenty fifth. The second doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a right. Zoom meeting. Um, I can check on the high school. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you to, to follow up your thought about going to the east side, we could have it out at Millbrook or Broken Ground. So we mm -hmm. could set there those. We have the budget sessions out at Millbrook, yep. uh, Millbrook every year. So. <coughs> If you want to do that, we'll I'll buy our lonesome I'll buy yeah. every year. <laughs> this way, we please, might actually get people. Please come and visit us next yeah. year. <laughs> we did um, one person. Yeah, we did, um, but I can do that. So it, you, you know, whatever your pleasure is. Uh, you, my slight preference would be for the high school only because then it could be broadcast live. But. Okay. And I don't know if others right. have a difference just to here. just to play devil's advocate. Yeah. There is an advantage to allowing the community to come yeah. to one of those sites and really yeah, take part, it in. Right. So it should either be at Runlet or Millbrook. I would agree because yeah, those are that, school. there is. I mean, that's an advantage mm -hmm. to having it at one of the sites is giving the community an opportunity to walk into it. You know. Well, we have had it. We have had several meetings at Runlet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't disagree with Pam, but. Media center there isn't as nice. You could go to the um, auxiliary gym. The uh, auxiliary gym. And the sound is just really hard. Yeah, to. it's it's still a big 
you know, like Cotton High School, you know, a lot. I like Millbrook only because it seems to be a little bit more intimate. It's not quite so big. Mm -hmm. And it can be live streamed. No, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, they'll, they'll take care of us. No, Millbrook cannot be live streamed. So neither of those sites can be. So neither the main reason sites. is not live streaming it then. So why aren't we just being here? So we'd have to just record it. So like, okay. like, 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 like you do it. And we'll have the Zoom option on the 26th as well. So yeah. it won't be, at least the second will be fully accessible. Well, more accessible. So Millbrook, is that? Uh, where do people? I like sense? it because we t we've been talking about Portsmouth Ave and mm. South Curtisville and the intersection and all of the things that are irritants for some. And I think people, it'd be nice if they drove out there and actually saw it. Right. Yeah, if, yeah that's a good call. If it's uh, if it's available, I would I would support that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Same. Okay. I'm easy. So me tell me where to show up. Five thirty yeah. at, at Millbrook. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Five thirty at Millbrook. 530 Okay. Thank you. And thank you. And one more thing, please. Mm -hmm. We go to the next. Oh, no. But I can do that. One, one of the things, too, is, you know, this is being, obviously, this is live tonight, um, that if people have questions that they con contact us through Concord Info, at sau8.org and then we can collect those questions and bring them to you so if if anybody has any thoughts or want to share there and weren't able to be with us tonight this would be a great way to communicate it um you know we're all we can always be reached at the sau office and you all have public numbers too so yes. you know yep. you're all available to the public to answer questions and i'm surprised jack didn't budget. put that up like he does mm -hmm. during the budget I, I did mention it, but then they were worried about you getting an email and you not getting it. Yeah. Um, we could at least harness it because it goes to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then send it out to you. And while there's a new site that's coming online at the end of August, the existing site right now, is available. Right on, our, yeah, right on our webpage is an existing site with all the data from the day that we began with the, with the focus groups that they had back in 2017. Um, and uh, we continue to add to that on any meetings that we've had. But we're also going to have a site dedicated to this portion mm -hmm. um, on that will be um, all around the site and the evaluation of the site and all the data. So, because you can get lost in all the yes, right. there's a so lot of information there. Now is just so much information. This will target site selection. Okay. 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 And because will you click on the middle school project site again? Comes and here. then the middle school project update on the right hand side, will you click on that? So that's going to update people through April of 2022. So I just want to make sure that, that like we, we have more information to give and without context, somebody looking at the site for the first time may be confused. Mm -hmm. So I'm stoked to hear that we've got a new site coming. But yeah. we should yeah, make sure we get this information this presentation right. on that site. Mm -hmm. And then yep. the same goes for on the right hand side of the column, we still have the letter of intent for the um, church property, sure. which yep. I think can also be very confusing to some because just without context that, that didn't move forward, okay. that mm -hmm. people are like, oh my God, are we still buying the, yeah. 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 Still yeah. Buying the land? You know, so, so while all the information is there without it being uh, in its proper uh, place, I, I think it should be confusing. Because there should be more on there. You know, we just switched over to a new um, platform, Apple G, and I want to make sure that that latest information is up there because that, that doesn't reflect that doesn't right what you have. Mm -hmm. I will check that in the morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as folks are leaving, I think Mr. John drew a line that shows 25 feet from this three-story building <laughs> that would give you an idea of how close the new school would be to Springfield Street, which to the backyard, from the back, backyard. the homes of. I, ha I have a line and a weed that shows it. A line and a weed. Yeah, a weed from the fence and a <laughs> line from the wall. So it could be 25 from either side. So, thank you. Everybody yeah. walk the line. Okay. Okay. Yay. Um, can Your I, favorite. Do you have something to say? I actually do to go back to the first one for the what? school, the oh. school <laughs> resolution. I do have a resolution yeah. to make. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but 
do we want to do that before or after? Well, I think we should do it now. Yeah. Get it done All right. Well, I have a resolution. It's regarding to universal free lunch for uh, submitting to yes. the New Hampshire School Board Association. Um, Brenda, I'll make sure to hand this over to you after so you don't have to transcribe all of it. Thank you very much. I Wh appreciate that. Whereas the Concord School Board recognizes the importance of nutrition for supporting the development and learning potential of New Hampshire students, whereas the Concord School Board believes it is critical to tackle childhood hunger and food insecurity, therefore we submit a resolution to the New Hampshire School Board Association to advocate to the New Hampshire State Legislature to create a universal and completely subsidized meal program for New Hampshire public school students. How similar is that to the resolution we supported last year? I have no idea. Okay. But it's the same general <laughs> concept. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have somebody taking minutes for this meeting. Tonight. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So if Sarah's doing that, if I could have yeah. that. Give that, yeah. yeah. You can give that to Kelly. She doesn't have to worry about it. I'll have her okay. take that. If is there a second it. to Mr. Weinberg's motion? So, yeah. yeah. Any friendly amendments? Any further discussion? Who seconded that? I'm sorry. Mr. Cotton. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you, Jonathan. Um, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? All right. Um, I will take a motion to move into non-public session. Before so you do that, could we ask a question? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we need to give? Do you need to give the architects any more direction? Because between <laughs> now and the twenty-fifth, do you need another one of these meetings? Did you like what you heard? Because this is what's going to be repeated at the public meeting on top of what you commented tonight. But we want to make sure we get all this information out. But is there anything that maybe you need to think about and let us know oh. so we can pass it on? But well, I was just going to say it was a great presentation, and it was yeah, very yeah. clear, and thank you. Yeah. And so also the timeline that was provided the last time we met I think would be super helpful for yes. citizens yeah. on the time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we could combine those two just because building yeah. aid is such a – Sticky wicked. Sticky wicked. Yeah. And so it's really, I know I've told a couple of people, oh, 2028, since the last time we talked about timeline, and they were like, you got to be kidding me. Okay. So, you know, just putting it all in context, I think it's really helpful. Sure. I think there is, um, hopefully we will have some information from the traffic engineer to well, share that was my in advance anything, anything of that you can meeting. Find out. So I think that, you know, we'd like to find a way to communicate that Does it information. Make sense to have you come, I don't know when the capital facilities meeting in uh, in September to have it. Actually, wait, I have it. Uh, it is the 6th. No, in preparation for tonight, obviously, Jack and I met Tatino and Molly, mm -hmm. Holly, 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 just so you know that we're doing that. Pretty so right now it is the sixth. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. We may also have some info from the fishing game. Mm -hmm. So there are things that will happen between now and the, the 25th. September 6th. Yeah, but I think I'd rather give them more time and have more information for us than having them come on the 6th when yeah. the first yeah. hearing is until the 25th. We just want to make sure for your public thing, is there more you want to see in it, or do you need yeah. more time to craft that? No, I, I, this was fantastic. Okay. I'm, I don't see any gaping hole in any of this. Mm -hmm. So I would just say within what we've seen, anything else that you come upon that it's adds to it. This doesn't mean it's the last public hearing. No, right. no. So we have Not our either. public hearings. Mm -hmm. They I present more. all the new and relevant, and you, you, you're obviously going to be at the hearing. And so you, we're going to, you're going to have a takeaway, and you're going to say, we need to do this, this, and this for the next one. We're not done yet. Remember, we have October, November before the final decisions are made by December 1st, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think you have plenty of time to come back, but let's go forward with what we have for the 25th, adding all of the pieces that they're about to hear from, and then um, you can give us feedback after that one. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, mm -hmm. Well, and also to add on that, at each of our monthly board meetings, there's a public comment period for folks to come right. and talk to us. Like yes. a mini hearing. Oh, and additionally, on the 16th, uh, Concord Green Space is hosting a community listening session right. at the community center. Um, I don't have, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you the time of it, but Six, thank you six, very six, much. Which so community I, center? 
the the community Keech center park. on the heights okay. next at keach park um i highly recommend folks come to that too the more we can be in a community and have these conversations the better off we are um, i'm planning on being there if i don't wind up with covid <laughs> cross your fingers that doesn't happen um so yeah all right awesome great um so can i have a motion for non-public so moved session under 91a3 section 2. is there a second 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 by miss higgins all in favor oh wait roll call Mr. Weinberg. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Croto. Aye. Mr. Cotton. Aye. Ms. Walsh. Aye. Ms. Meeker. Yep. Mrs. Robinson. Ms. Yes. Robinson. Yes. And Thanks I'll to vote you. Aye. So yes. All in Mrs. favor. Um, for those watching on television, we will not be coming back except to end the meeting after the non-public session. Thank you. And let's take a two-minute break to let people clear out.